Hello, I'm Cornelia and I'm teacher for 20 years. I believe that collaboration is inevitable. That's why I'm going to share my experience with collaborative learning with you. I just love learning and I've never stopped being a student in this world that is changing constantly. It's just impossible not to learn all the time. Collaboration is also inevitable for us. I think that none of successful projects uh, or ideas are just the result of one person. One of the first projects was with little children. It was uh, in the school of my daughter. So if you imagine almost thousand children, eight, nine years old, then their parents, then about 50 teachers and 35 schools working together from, from different countries of Europe, working together to create a great fairy tale books with pictures, with drawings of children and videos also. It was something that it was uh, for me, such a great experience. I saw children who enjoyed themselves, who, who were looking forward to come to school, to continue <laughs> on working on this project. And I, I just saw how, how important it was for them because they improved their digital competency, they improved their English, and also tolerance and empathy for others. So this was something that I decided to bring also to my school, of course. My first collaborative project can't say that it was a big success uh, because uh, I, I asked my students to create a guide for tourists coming uh, to Bratislava, but in fact uh, they were frustrated because they were arguing, they didn't accept each other's ideas and perspectives, they, they were complaining because some of them worked very hard, but the others not, because they were relying on others. So in the end, yes, somehow the result was okay, but the process was awful, <laughs> and they really didn't enjoy it. And of course, I didn't enjoy it either, but it was my failure. I have to say that it was my failure because I somehow thought that collaboration is kind of a natural thing, but it is not. We need to teach students how to collaborate. First of all, uh, if we want to collaborate, we need to appreciate others. We need to see uh, the meaning of collaboration, of purpose of collaboration. And we need to be tolerant, because how can you collaborate with others without tolerance, without taking into account other perspectives, and without good relationships? It's just not possible. So that was the first step that I began to work on. If you want to to learn, if we want to collaborate, we need to have a really supportive and safe environment. So I, I usually ask my students, how would you like to feel in, in your classroom? And then they, in teams, they just brainstorm the ideas, okay, how do we want to feel and what should we do so that we all feel that way? It's not enough just to say, okay, I, I want to feel nice or I want to feel well, but what does it mean? And then when I want to feel like safe or I want to be respected, what, does it, what should we do so that you feel respected? So this is like the process, one or two lessons it, it takes to design this charter, but then we are ready to, to, to start working or collaborating. Of course, then we have also some kinds of instructions what to do if the rules uh, are not followed. But it is the work of the students, not mine. That is important. What I do with students at, at the beginning is uh, to somehow to think of, uh, about their strengths. They should know their strengths. And because when I know my strength, then I also appreciate others. And I, I, I see how different we are. And then we can contribute to something uh, together. But also, 
I ask students about activities that they like. When do you feel really deep uh, in activity? What kind of activity it is? Or when do you experience this flow? When do you forget about time? And so, so these kind of questions and then they can see their strengths, these activities that they really like and that they enjoy. And another thing is about competencies. And I would like to mention Entrecom. And I designed like a quiz so that they can assess their competencies according to that. First of all, I need to know myself. I need to know my strengths. I need to know my emotions and how to manage my emotions. So, and then, of course, I, I can uh, develop my empathy for others. So this, this social and emotional intelligence is just the base. They need to see the purpose of what they are doing. It's great if we can offer students, and I do this at least one year, uh, to, to offer a real purposeful activity that is important for community. Everybody wants to be like valued member of a community and uh, we have such project that they do something kind they do something good for others and with this then they really feel satisfaction and joy and happiness and these emotions then are important for further learning if you are enjoying something then you learn much better This is another thing that I like to do. They like connect school with, with business, with private sector. Why not? So I invited a company uh, to my school and they gave a challenge to my students. It was uh, like a challenge, like think big and help community. Students were divided into teams and each team uh, got a mentor from that company. But then we went to the company and we worked in real this um, environment, company environment, which, which was great. And you can't imagine how students were proud and they, they were able to work from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. because then at 5 they had to present their projects, their project how they want to help community. That was really learning by doing then. So there were different projects and they had to present this to the board of, uh, they were managers of that company. So it was such a <laughs> very huge event. It, it was very important, stressful for students, but they were, they were supported by those mentors. And the winning project was a charity run. And then they had to, plan it and put it just into practice. The purpose was to, to collect money for children in Sierra Leone, in Africa. Yes, we, we were able to collect the money and then send it to them. But it was thanks to many, many schools that joined our project, which was just such a big task for my students to inspire others and to organize, even to inspire town so that they, the town, you know, like municipality. It was, uh, in the end, we had a Skype call with those children and that was a huge reward because you, you can't imagine such like, like happy they were on both sides. Those very strong emotions then can trigger more learning and, and this proudness that we are, we are like members of this community and members of this school. <laughs> it was something. <laughs> At the moment, uh, I, uh, I apply EduScrum. So Scrum comes from IT business and EduScrum uh, is a framework for coaching students. Teachers said what to do and students decide how and uh, they have their roles. They divide into teams that are based on their uh, strengths, on their different abilities, so that they have this interdependence <laughs> that is very important. And so they are self-organized teams. Very important part is transparency. It means that any time they, and also me as a teacher, can see how they are working, what, what to do next, uh, what they have done already. But before something is done, we decide what does it mean to be done? You know, what are the criteria? 
And also this is collaborative work. The beginning, it, it can be difficult for both sides, but it's, it's like with everything. At the beginning, you don't need to be perfect. But if you believe that it is important for, for students, for, for you, for, for their learning, for, for developing of their competencies, because you develop a lot of competencies by applying this. Or mistakes or failures. Yes, they are great because they just learn from them. The important part of the Scrum is reflection. I do this always at the, the end of the project that we do this like individual reflection and then team reflection. I do my own reflection and then the reflection as a class uh, because we, we need to reflect, okay, what was done? How did I contribute? What, how did I feel about that? Or uh, what, what can I do better next time? Or what did I do wrong? So, so these kind of questions. But we also use the GIPS reflective cycle. And that is what I use with my students to reflect in, on whatever we do. And sometimes in reflection, we even see that something unexpected happened. So we needed to react somehow, which is great because this way we also learn how to be flexible, how to be resourceful. This is good for real life. I always ask my students to give me feedback. And uh, feedback on my activity was that they would like uh, to, to do more things just without my presence or checking or they just want to do things their own way and then i just began to practice this approach that let them do as much as possible they are able to do and you just be this kind of lazy teacher you you don't need to teach them all the time because more you teach them less they learn so this was what i learned for me as a teacher not easy is to stop thinking that we should push all the content that we should that we think that students should know we, we push all this knowledge to their heads i just give you a very sad message that students will forget most of the things that we teach them for their creativity, for, for the innovative process, for the brain, it's important to, to give them space to develop competencies, which is as important as to this knowledge and content. The best thing I can do for my students is to create safe, supportive environment with good relationships environment where students feel that they can make mistakes, that they can fail and they will not be punished, but they will be able to learn from mistakes because that is what is happening in real life. Thank you for watching and I hope that you have found some useful tips for implementing collaborative learning in your classrooms. So join Open Space Community and keep learning.